of W O One WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. The FTS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon Nine has cleared the tower. Ten. Nine. Eight. Side booster ignition. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Good morning. It's Monday, September 28th, and you are looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 10.22 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Hello from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Alex Siegel, and I'm a senior material planner here at SpaceX. You're watching a live webcast for our 13th Starlink mission and our 17th mission this year. To date, we've launched more than 700 Starlink satellites to orbit. As a reminder, Starlink is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet all over the globe, particularly in our remote, remote and rural areas where connectivity is limited or completely unavailable. Today's mission will be a bit longer than our recent Starlink missions. We will be lighting our second stage twice and deploying the stack of 60 satellites at about an hour into the mission. By deploying our satellites after two second stage burns to a circular orbit, it helps to get them to their final orbit much faster. We are at T minus eight minutes and 17 seconds. All systems are go for an on-time liftoff this morning. Now, but we are currently no go for weather, which is a watch item. On your screen is a live view of Falcon 9, our two-stage liquid-fueled launch vehicle standing 229 feet tall, or slightly taller than a 21-story building. Today, this booster will be flying for the third time. It made its debut on our Commercial Crew Demo-2 mission at the end of May, which sent Bob and Doug safely on their journey to the International Space Station, and it flew again in July for the Anasys-2 mission. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle is the first stage. You can see the soot markings left over from its previous flight. The first stage accelerates the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of nine Merlin engines at the base of the rocket. Today, we will be attempting to recover our first stage for the third time on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You. Now, above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine, which ignites after the first stage separates. The second stage is what will carry the Starlink satellites into a circular orbit above the Earth's surface. Falcon 9 has been loading propellant since T minus 35 minutes. As a reminder, we use a rocket-grade kerosene, or RP-1, as our fuel, and super-chilled liquid oxygen, or LOX, as our oxidizer to power the Falcon 9. Currently, RP-1 and LOX are nearly fully loaded on both stages, and LOX will continue to be topped off right into the last minute of the countdown. The stack of 60 satellites is safely enclosed inside of the 17-foot diameter payload fairing, which is the pointed cone on the very top of the rocket. This protects the satellites from aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during ascent. Once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. One of the fairing halves today is brand new, and the other supported two previous Starlink launches, one in May 2019 and the other in March of this year. We will be attempting to recover them today using our recovery ships Miss Tree and Miss Chief. At about two minutes before the fairing halves are expected to land, the team will conduct a go, no-go poll for the catch. The weather is an important factor in the decision as it impacts the sea states for the recovery boats as well as how the fairings fall back to Earth. Now, as a reminder, as I mentioned earlier, weather currently is a no-go. We have some thick clouds and the skies above our launch pad, and we're worried about how that might impact Falcon 9 as its ascent. So with that, the vehicle, satellites, and range are all looking good for an on-time launch, minus the weather that's going to be a watch item right up to the last minute. Now, as many of you watching may know, SpaceX was founded under the belief that a future where humanity is out exploring the stars is fundamentally more exciting than one where we are not. From rocket reusability to developing interplanetary transportation systems, our teams get to work on programs with the potential to impact both our lives on Earth and beyond the stars and Starlink is no exception. As I mentioned earlier, today's mission marks our 13th Starlink mission. By design, these satellites will be able to service areas where internet connectivity has been unreliable, too expensive, or completely unavailable. 
This kind of network has never been done before, and our team continues to grow as we get closer to this goal. Specifically, the Starlink team in Redmond is looking for great engineers to join our network operations center. Our NOC engineers are constantly monitoring Starlink to ensure that SpaceX's orbital and ground assets are delivering the best possible user experience. We're also looking for full stack software engineers. Starlink is an incredibly flexible system, so smart algorithms and simple user interfaces are critical to our success. As a software engineer, you can have huge impact on the quality of our service. If you're interested, send your resume to softwarejobs at spacex.com or check out the careers page on our website. We are currently at T minus four minutes and 14 seconds from liftoff, and Falcon 9 is now moving into the final stages of the countdown. The first and second stages are both nearly fully loaded with one million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Super chilled liquid oxygen, which as I mentioned earlier is our propellant oxidizer, is what's creating those white clouds you see around Falcon 9 when it's exposed to the warmer ambient air. First stage should finish prop loading at T minus three minutes, and second stage will be a minute behind that at T minus two minutes. At T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 is in startup. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. The Starlink payload continues to be healthy. The F-9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather, again, still questionable and no go, but the range is green for launch. You can notice on your screen above Falcon 9 that we are looking at some pretty cloudy skies. And so we are still no-go, but hoping we get a little clearance right at our launch window so we can thread the needle, as they say. We're just under a minute away from LOX loading completion. And then 30 seconds after that, we would expect to see that white cloud that uh, common viewers are used to seeing of the transporter erector LOX line. Twenty seconds from now, we should complete locks loading. And now at T minus two minutes, locks loading is complete on the vehicle. You can see the prominent white cloud venting from the transporter erector locks line. Again, this is normal. We are 20 seconds from entering startup. Again, as a reminder, and for folks just turning in, we are still no go on weather for this launch. We're going to keep counting down into the last possible moment, moment, and if the weather is not clear, we will call it. So sit tight. Hopefully, we can make this one happen today. First stage and second stage are pressurizing for launch. Hold, hold, hold. This is a Starlink L12 scrub due to weather violations. And we just heard the hold on the nets. Unfortunately, it looks like due to weather violations, we're going to have to scrub today. Um, but again, the uh, most important thing is reducing as much risk on the mission as possible. And with that comes waiting for a window of good weather. 
thanks again, folks, for tuning in. Uh, we currently don't have a backup launch schedule yet. We do have the GPS launch schedule for tomorrow. But as soon as we know that information, we'll share it on our socials. So please keep checking for the next Starlink launch opportunity. Thanks again, and everyone have a great day.